All right, so this is where we left off yesterday, um, ordering rational numbers. Now, the secret to ordering rational numbers, when I say order them, that means line them up from least to greatest. The secret to doing that is to take all of your fractions and convert them to decimals. Take all of your fractions and convert them to decimals. Now that means we have to do long division and I know that that's nobody's favorite thing to do. But the reason we wanna do that is because it's very difficult to compare fractions. For example, Which of those fractions is larger? Which of them has more value? Anna, you want to bet your life on it? Don't be wrong. <laughs> exactly. You're sure. You, you, you're guessing. Okay, taking, taking an educated guess. But do I want to guess if I have to be absolutely sure? Probably not. And so this is why we don't like to do that. The, the only way I can be 100% sure which one's bigger is by finding a common denominator. And if I find a common denominator and I change my numerators, I can then tell which of these is bigger. Now, good luck finding a common denominator between 51 and 163. Now, I want you to imagine having three or four fractions and trying to find a common denominator that lines up for all four of them. That would take very, 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 a very long time, okay? It's actually easier to, instead of trying to compare fractions, compare decimals. Because what if I told you that uh, you had a decimal like 0 0.71 and then a, zero, uh, then a decimal like 0 0.8? And I said, I need you to compare those. Now, would you be feeling a little bit more confident? Which of these is bigger, 0 0.71 or 0 0.8? 0 0.8 is bigger. That's right. And the reason, if you're wondering, well, hit, hang on a second, why is, why is 8 bigger than 71? It's because 71 has two decimal places. If you make 0.8 have two decimal places, it actually becomes 0.80. Really easy to compare decimals. Make sure they have the same number of decimal places, you're good to go. You won't get confused. Okay. It's a lot easier to make sure they have the same number of decimal places than it is to try to find out what a common denominator is. And that's why we're going to do that. So going into our next problem. It says the table shows the elevations of four sea creatures relative to sea level, relative to sea level. Can someone explain to me why all four of these fractions and decimals are negative? Bryce? That's right. That's right. Sea level is represented by, the, uh, by zero, that the uh, elevation of zero. So anything underwater is going to be negative then. So these are all four negatives. Now, remember how the negative numbers work. The more negative you get, the smaller the number. Now, in, in this problem, the more negative you get, we're going to say the deeper underwater you are. Does that make sense? More negative means deeper. It's actually smaller elevation. You're getting smaller and smaller elevation, lower and lower. Which of the sea creatures is deeper than the whale? So this is what we want to compare everything to, the whale. The whale is the only one that's already written as a decimal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert all three of these fractions to decimal form and then determine, is it deeper than negative 0.8? Let's start with the anglerfish. To turn a fraction into a decimal, I'm supposed to do what? That's exactly right. Top divided by bottom. So 13 goes inside the box, not outside. 10 goes inside. Usually, when you convert a fraction into a decimal, the smaller number goes inside the box. That's not a rule. That's just usually what happens. The rule states that the top number always goes in. Now, the fact that the top number is bigger means that this is an improper fraction. So if you're wondering, well, hang on a second. 10 goes into 13. It should, because it's improper. It's going to be bigger than 1. So 10 goes into 13 exactly one time. And what's my subtraction going to give me? 3. Put a decimal point. Drop down to 0. Put a decimal point up in my answer. How many times does 10 go into 30? Three. Was there anything in front of the fraction? Negative sign. So I should put a negative in front of my decimal. This is going to be negative 1.3. That is the anglerfish's elevation. By the way, another way you could have done this one, you could have converted negative 13 tenths into negative 1 and 3 tenths. And remember what I said about tenths? 3 tenths is 0.3. 
you could have immediately, without doing any long division, said that's just negative 1.3. And if that's what you were going to do, that's fine. Let me ask you this. Is the angler fish deeper than the whale? Is it more negative? It is. Yep. So what we'll do, put a check mark next to the uh, angler fish. That one's deeper than the whale. So that counts. By the way, when it says explain, in math, when it says explain, a lot of times just showing your work is, is, is enough to give that explanation. Um, okay, next one is the squid. The squid I'm going to do over here in purple. Okay, The squid is negative two and one fifth. Okay, So I take what's written in front of the fraction, the negative two, and I'm going to put it in front of the decimal. Now, do you remember what one fifth is? We just went over this. What's one fifth? 0.20, can I put 0.2? Okay, done, squid's done. If you don't remember that one fifth is 0.2, you'll have to go off to the side and you'll have to do one divided by five. Yes, the one goes inside, this is the top number. You'll change it to 0.10 and you'll get, there's your 0.2. And don't forget there was a negative two in front, so negative 2.2. So there's your squid. Let me ask you this, is the squid deeper than the whale? Yes, so put a check mark next to the squid. The last one's a sharp, and I'll do this one down here. Now, I guarantee you don't have your 11s memorized. So we're going to have to do long division on this one. What number goes inside the division box? Two, the top number. Yep, it's always the top number. 11 is going to go on the outside. 11 doesn't go into two. So I'm immediately putting my decimal point, which I wanted to turn this into a decimal. So of course, I need one. And I'm going to make it 2.0. You know, think of it as a 20, though. Georgia, how many times does 11 go to 20? Just once. Yeah, 11 times 2 is 22. That's too big. So I'm going to subtract. And Georgia, what's 20 minus 11? 9. Good. I'm going to drop down to 0. Maddie Cheeseman, how many times does 11 go into 90? 8 times. What is 11 times 8? 88. So I subtract, and I'm going to get 2. I drop down to 0. Georgia, how many times does 11 go into 20? 1. What are you noticing? It's repeating. It's going to go back to one. And then I'll ask Maddie, and it'll go back to eight and back to one and back to eight. So this is going to be negative 0.18 repeating. Um, and again, don't forget, if there's a negative in front of the fraction, anything in front of the fraction has to get copied down to being in front of the decimal. So there's my negative sign, and there's the sharp. Is the sharp deeper than the whale? No, it's not. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, well, hang on. If the one and eight go on forever, how is that not going to be bigger or deeper than the chart? And so the reason for that is because when I'm comparing decimals, when I'm comparing decimals, I go one decimal place at a time. Eight beats one. I can stop. I don't need to go on. It doesn't matter how many digits I put after because even though this one goes on forever, um, I could technically put an infinite number of zeros, couldn't I? And 800 is still going to be 180. And 8,000 is still going to be 1,800. It's always going to be bigger. Now, in this case, bigger means deeper because it's negative. So the shark is not as deep as what the whale is. So the shark, and that makes sense because um, typically when we see sharks, when we think of sharks, we see them floating around towards the top of the water, the fins hanging out, right? I've, I've seen whales, or I've seen pictures of whales coming out of the water, but I see way more short sharks than I do whales. So whales are, are just not quite as, uh, or sharks are not quite as deep as the whales. Questions on that? Okay, you have a, you have two homework problems um, from last night's homework, number 30 and number 32. They're gonna have you do the same thing. For number 30 and 32, you can see they give you a mixture of fractions and decimals. They also give you a mixture of positives and negatives. Remember, any negative number is automatically smaller than any positive number. So as I'm starting to organize these, start with your negatives. In number 30, how many fractions do I have? Two. So I have two fractions that I have to convert to decimal, long division, unless I know what those decimals already are. Do you know what one-fourth is? What's one-fourth as a decimal? 
0.25. Don't have to do that. Do you know what eight fifths is? Eh. Okay, what if I asked you instead though, what if I told you that eight fifths as a mixed number was one and three fifths? Do you know what three fifths is? 0.2, 0.4, 0.6. Yeah, so if this is negative one and three fifths, then it's negative 1.6 and I haven't done any long division. All right, that's why it's nice to know some of those fractions memorized. And then start with your negatives. I think when you write them in the boxes here, I think they want you to write them in their original form. I'm not, I'm not sure on that. Has someone tested it already? Has anyone gotten this far? You have? Were you able to write them in fraction form or decimal form or did it matter? Like if I converted this to 0.25, could I put 0.25 in the box and say try it? You didn't try it? You wrote the original form. Have you submitted it yet? Will you go open it right now and tell me if you replace one fourth with 0.25 and check your answer if it gives you the green? Because that's gonna be really, I really would like to know that. Because if that's the case, just leave it as 0.25. Now, while she's doing that, number 32 has how many fractions? Three. So I have three that I have to do. Uh, I would convert them into mixed numbers again. How many times does two go into seven? Three times with one left over. So this is negative three and a half. What's, what's a half as a decimal? 0.5. So this is negative 3.5. See what I'm, I'm not even using division. Now, I probably will have to use division when I get to one and one third over here, the four thirds. Um, and what you'll find out is that that one and one third, it's going to repeat. So we're repeating that's more right there. Um, we can look at more of these problems later. Okay? So like maybe tomorrow, if you're wanting to zoom with me, if you're stuck on this, or... it doesn't want 0.25. Okay, so it wants you to write it in its original form. So even though we need to write it on our paper as 0.25, so we can order them from least to greatest, make sure when you write it in the box, back here that you put it as its original form as a fraction. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll take homework questions. We can do lots of those tomorrow. Okay, so feel free to email me if you're stuck on one. We can Zoom, we can chat back and forth on email, whatever works. What I want to do now is I want to move on to our next lesson, which is actually due on Thursday, which is 2.2. And these notes are available for download right now on Google Classroom. Titled Adding Rational Numbers. Due today is your chapter two opener. And I have not collected those work papers yet. Does anyone have the chapter two opener or work paper ready to turn it? Okay, we can hold up. I'll come around and collect those. Chapter two opener due today. That was the four questions the two turning fraction decimal and the two turning decimal back to fraction. That's due at 2.30, so if you're not done with it yet, make sure you get that done at some point. Thank you. Did you do the chapter two of them? Let's do it two thirty. All right, make sure you have these notes downloaded. I know I'm asking a lot. I'm giving out homework a day early. I'm collecting homework. I'm, I'm going over notes. I'm, I went over, yes, finished up yesterday's notes. We're doing a lot today. It's a good thing everything's getting recorded if you miss something. All right, section 2.2 is titled Adding Rational Numbers, and that's very misleading because even though it says adding rational numbers, we are going to do some subtraction today. Why? Maybe. We are using decimals. We're going to use fractions as well. We're using negatives. That's right. 
So remember, when you're adding numbers and you have a negative plus a negative, you're going to join forces or go to war? Join forces, it's going to stay negative. It's going to get bigger, right? More negative. What if I'm adding and I have a positive plus a negative? Am I going to join forces or go to war? Go to war. And every time that we go to war, it means that we need to subtract. So even though this is titled adding, and there's going to be addition signs for every single problem, but every time we go to war, it actually turns into subtraction problem. Now, there is one thing that we will definitely not have to do on today's homework, keep change opposite. Keep change opposite is reserved for only problems that are written as subtraction. There aren't any problems today that are written as subtraction. They will all be written as addition. Now, we may have to subtract, but we're not going to rewrite anything because it's already written as addition. So we're going to take these integer rules and we're going to apply them to the rules you already know about decimals. When I'm adding or subtracting decimals, what do I have to do? Line up the decimal points. Do you think that's rule is going to change? No, I don't have the power to change that rule. I'm just going to combine the rules you already know and add in our integer rules of going to, going to war, change, change era, sorry, going to war or joining forces. What about fractions? If you're adding two fractions together, what do you have to do? Find a common denominator. That rule is not going to change either. We're still going to do that. And then we're just going to either be joining forces or going to war. So this really isn't a new section that we're doing. It's really just a review. And we're just adding in our integer rules with all the fraction decimal rules that we already know. Okay, so let's start with the easy one, decimals. When I'm adding or subtracting decimals, I want to ask myself, same signs or different signs? Okay, remember same signs means we're actually going to add and we're going to join forces. Different signs means we're going to get a war and we're going to subtract, right? Now there's one thing I want to do between there. I got to line up the decimal points, right? Line up the decimal points and I'm going to put the larger number on top. That is so important. Put the larger number on top. Here's why. When I'm subtracting, even if I know it says addition, right? If I end up going to war and I'm subtracting, you can't subtract a small number minus a larger number. For example, if I gave you a problem like this, who wins that battle, the positives or the negatives? The positives, by how much? 15. Did you do two minus 17 or did you do 17 minus two to get your 15? See how we have rearranged it in our head? Okay. Well, today we won't be able to do it in our head because they're decimals. So we have to rearrange, we have to force them to rearrange. We have to put the larger number on top, otherwise we can't do the subtraction, okay? When you're adding, it doesn't matter. When you're adding, it doesn't matter which number you put on top, but since it matters when you subtract, we might as well just always put the larger number, just in case. Larger number, put it on top. Let's look at the first problem here. Am I going to be joining forces or going to war, Matty Yantes? I'm going to war. Can you tell me who wins this battle, the positives or the negatives? Okay, so I'm just going to put a plus over here to remind myself this is positive. I've already checked that. Now that I've checked it, and Maddie Yentes has told us we're going to go to war, which means we're going to subtract, you're not going to see me write a negative sign for the rest of the problem. Larger number minus smaller number. I mean, I wrote a subtraction sign, but I didn't write the negative down. That was the front of the four. I don't have to. I already know I'm subtracting. I already know the answer is going to be positive, so I don't worry about the negatives anymore. Can I do two minus five? Nope. So in subtraction, we call that what? Borrowing. Borrow from the six. What's 12 minus five? Five minus zero? Seven minus four? Don't forget to copy your decimal point down. And because Maddie said it's going to be positive, uh -huh. I know I don't need to write anything in front of the three. 3.57. That's pretty easy. It doesn't get much more difficult than that, guys. That's why everyone tends to like decimals better. Now, my argument is next week when we do adding or when we do multiplying and dividing, I think you're going to like fractions better. That's just me. I think you're actually, I think you'll side with me on that one. Once we figure out that dividing decimals means we have to do a lot more long division, I think you're going to like dividing fractions better. 
So anyways, but today I like adding decimals. That's way easier than adding with fractions. I totally get that. Um, let's look at the next one. Hannah Lindley, is this going to be a uh, joining forces or going to war problem? Yep, we're going to join forces. When you join forces, they don't switch teams, correct? So what's my sign going to be? Yep, so I'm just going to write that down right here. So I've already checked it. I know it's going to be negative. Um, I know that joining forces means I'm adding. So you will not see me write a negative in front of the eight. You won't see me write a negative in front of the four. I don't need to anymore. Because I already know my answer is going to be negative. I should, I'll put it down there. And I know I'm adding. So I don't, need, I don't care about the negatives anymore. Um, what should I put underneath the five? A zero. Yep, I can, I can put as many zeros in those empty blank spaces as I want to. What's five minus, uh, sorry, I'm adding. I should put the plus sign there. I'm adding because I'm joining forces. What's five plus zero? One plus three. Drop down the decimal point, eight plus four. And Hannah said it's negative, so negative 12.45. They join forces, they get bigger. Actually, they get smaller because it's more negative, but we don't, we, that's okay. We don't want to think about it that way. Example C. Negative 0.65 plus, I'm sorry, positive 0.65 plus negative 2.7. Branson, is this a join forces or go to war problem? Go to war. Put the larger number on top. Don't worry about writing a negative. Going to war means I'm subtracting. Put the smaller number on bottom. Line up the decimal points. Branson, does the positive army or the negative army win this war? Negative. So might as well just put a negative down here or I'm going to write my answer because the answer is negative. Um, and then fill in with some empty zeros. That empty space, zero. This empty space, zero. Cannot do zero minus five. So I have to borrow. What's 10 minus five? Oh, yeah, sorry. I was looking at the next one. I didn't say that. What's six minus six? Zero, two minus zero? Negative two point zero five. Last decimal one. Thomas, is this a uh, joining forces or going to war problem? Yep, so I'm gonna subtract. I'm gonna put the larger number on top. Gonna line up my decimal points. I'm gonna subtract because I'm going to war, like Thomas said, fill in some extra zeros. Thomas, who wins this battle? The negatives or the positives? Negatives, so I'm just gonna put my negative right down here because I know my answer is negative. I've already checked that. I'm good to subtract now. Five minus zero. Three minus zero, two minus two, drop down the decimal point, two minus zero, and one minus one. So this decimal or this negative right over here, and it's now negative 2.035. Or if you want to get fancy about it, negative two and 35 thousandths. How do you feel about adding and subtracting decimals? Using our, using our integer rules is pretty easy there, right? Let's move on to fractions then. We should probably spend some time here. As Branson mentioned earlier, um, when you're adding or subtracting with fractions, you have to find a common denominator. I'd challenge you to find the least common denominator or the LCD. There are lots of common denominators you can use, but there's only one smallest. The advantage to using the smallest common denominator is because when we're working in fractions, we have to reduce. So if your denominator is as small as you can make it, there's a good chance you won't have to reduce it all. And if you do, it won't be that by that much. Whereas if you just use a bigger common denominator, you will definitely have to reduce. If you end up changing the denominator of a fraction, you have to change the numerator as well. And then we're gonna ask ourselves, same signs, different signs, going to war, joining forces. Okay, remember if we join forces, we add. And if we go to war, we subtract. So let's look at the first example here. It's negative seven eighths plus one fourth. Now, right away, you might be saying go to war. And I'm gonna say, slow down a second. You're right. We are gonna to go to war. Let's find a common denominator first before we start figuring out who's gonna win. What's my least common denominator, Branson? Eight. I'm looking for the first multiple of four that's also a multiple of eight. Now don't get multiples confused with factors. Factors are smaller multiples are bigger. So when I'm looking at multiples, I'm thinking four times one, 
is four, four times two is eight, four times three is 12. And when I'm thinking multiples of eight, I do the same thing. And eight is the first time they're both gonna intersect. That's how I find my least common denominator. So because my denominator is gonna be an eight, that means I don't even have to change the first fraction. The only thing I'm gonna do differently about the first fraction is I'm gonna take the negative that's written off to the side and I'm gonna put it up here with a seven so I don't forget about it. I've seen that happen a lot where we have a negative out there and then when we add them, we don't even see the negative anymore. So we do the wrong thing. We join forces instead of going to war or, or vice versa because we didn't see the negative. Um, the second fraction, we're timesing four by two. So we're gonna change that. And we're gonna multiply one by two and that's gonna give us two eighths. One fourth is the same as two eighths. Now that I have a common denominator, I can then ask myself if I'm adding or subtracting. So Parker, is this a joining forces or going to war problem? Yeah, so I'm going to subtract. Who's going to win the war, negatives or positives? The negatives, by how much? Close, seven minus two? Five, here we go, negative five eighths. As I mentioned yesterday, it doesn't bother me if you put the negative up five, or if you put the negative in the middle, or heck, you could even put the negative down below, as long as the negative's there. And as long as I can tell it apart from your fraction bar, and your equal sign. Okay, I've seen way too many of this. Like that to me doesn't look like negative five eighths, although I can see, a just, you know, it, we need to make sure that we're writing it clearly enough that we're separating the fraction bars from equal signs. I've seen people put the negative sign in the equal sign like that. That just confuses me. It's hard to see that stuff when you're trying to grade, you know, 75 quizzes at a time. So, Make sure you guys write your answer neatly, please. Let's move to example B. I'm looking for the first multiple of three that's also a multiple of six. Ella, what do you think? It is six, nice job. Three times two is six, six times one is six. Now what I'm doing off to the side here, I'm not gonna write that on my paper, but that's, that's kind of what's going on in my head, right? I'm thinking first multiple they both have in common. So if they have a six in common as the first multiple, that means unfortunate enough, I don't even have to change the second fraction. Again, I'm gonna bump, bump the negative five up, the negative up with the five, but I'm not gonna change anything. Multiply the three by a two, multiply the eight by a two, and you get 16, six. Now, the reason we're able to do that is because there's a property in math that you guys learned a long time ago, obviously along with your commutative and associative and distributive properties, it's called the identity property. The identity property of multiplication states that you can times the number by one and nothing happens. It keeps its identity. Well, Mr. Bright, you're timesing by two. How's that identity property? I'm actually timesing the top and the bottom number by two. I'm actually multiplying by two over two. What's two over two reduced to? One. I'm using the identity property. And the identity property allows me to change this so I have a common denominator so I can do it. So I'm not actually changing the fraction. 16, six is the same as eight thirds, just so we're on the same page about that. Is this a going to war or joining forces problem? Going to war? That makes, uh, what, five problems in a row that we've gone to war on? And this homework was titled adding. <laughs> going to war means we're gonna subtract. Who's gonna win, positive or negative army? The positives by how much? By one on what's 16 minus five? 11, they're gonna win by 11. And the positive army wins, positive 11 over six. Now, I'm completely okay with you leaving that answer as 11 over six. 11 over six is reduced. It is not a mixed number, but it's reduced. I'm not gonna make you write your answers as mixed numbers. If you don't want to write them as mixed numbers, you do not have to write them as mixed numbers. You can leave it as 11, six. What I don't want you to do is write it as 22 over 12, because that's not reduced. But if you reduce it and it's, you leave it as an improper fraction, I'm fine with that. The only exception is if you're doing a big ideas homework problem and it says write your answer as a mixed number, they're not gonna accept improper. But on your quiz or test, I will accept it. Example C, how do I turn two into a fraction, Thomas? That's right, put it over one. Turn any whole number or integer into a fraction simply by putting it over one because we know two divided by one is still two. I haven't changed it. Plus, 
negative seven over two. What's my first common denominator gonna be? What's the first multiple of one that's also a multiple of two? Just two, yep. So I'm gonna change the uh, two over one to a four over two by times by two. I'm gonna leave the first, second fraction alone because it already has a denominator of two. And we have six problems in a row that we're gonna be going to war on. Rayleigh, who wins this war, the positives or the negatives? Who's got more? The negatives have more? How many more do they have? Uh, Remember, we're, hey, we're not whispering answers back there. Once we have our common denominator, we just have to look at our numerators. They have three more, don't they? So negative three over two. That fraction's reduced, so it's good. If you want to write it as negative one and one half, that's fine. I'm not going to mark off if you write it as a mixed number. That's fine. You write it as a mixed number. Okay. I'm just saying you don't have to. Example D. Now we have two mixed numbers. So on Thursday and Friday, I'm going to show you how you can leave these as mixed numbers because I'm sure you've been taught to write them as improper fractions and do it that way. I'm going to show you that you don't have to do it when you're adding or subtracting. I think it's a shortcut, but I don't have time to teach that to you right now. So I'm just going to have you do what you've been doing, which is just turn them into improper fractions. To turn a mixed number into an improper fraction, start with the denominator, multiply it to the whole number. What's three times five? 15, what's 15? And then add two, what's 15 plus two? Okay, make a negative because it's a negative mixed number. It's gonna be a negative fraction. Same thing here. What's four times one? Plus one. So this is gonna be five fourths or negative five fourths because it's negative. What's the first multiple of three that's also a multiple of four? 12. Yep, the first time they intersect happens to be a 12. And so I'm gonna change my denominators to 12. By the way, you'll always get a common denominator when you multiply the denominators together. It's just not always the least common. In this case, it is. If I go back one problem or a couple problems, eight times four gives me 32. Is, it, is 32 a common denominator? Yeah, it is. Is it the smallest one I could use? Absolutely not. Yeah, so um, make sure you're not just doing that because it's gonna cost you extra reducing time. Um, I need to multiply this fraction by four over four, and I don't know what 17 times four is, so here's what I'm gonna do in my head. Can you tell me what four times 10 is? 40. Can you tell me what four times seven is? 28. What do you get when you add 40 and 28? 68. This is going to be ne negative 68 then. That way I don't have to write it down. If you want to write it down, feel free to write it down. That's still going to give you 68. Okay. Um, here I don't have to use that method because I should be able to do five times three in my head. What's five times three? Okay. Is this a joining forces or going to war problem? Finally, I can join forces and add them. So 68 plus 15. What's five plus eight? 13, carry the one. What's one plus six plus one? Okay. When I join forces, do they switch teams? Nope. So negative 83 over 12. That is reduced. It's not a mixed number, but it's reduced. And I'm okay with that. We'll stop right here. And when you come back on Thursday, actually, I'll tell you what. I will send out a small video and we'll finish up the notes. That I'll send that out tomorrow as your e-learning, just a small video to fit, that way we can finish these and we can come in and start fresh on Thursday with subtraction, okay? Email me if you have any questions over your e-learning homework and I'll see you guys later today. If you wanna come in during success time and ask me a question, you can. <laughs>